So, first and foremost, the Orheim of the Pro Slavs is the Eastern European Plain, specifically the Pripet Marshes, which is far away from the Balkans and separated from it by natural borders like the Carpathian Mountains. The original Proto Slavs have retained their genetic and ethnic makeup through the contemporary Western and Eastern Slavs. They're genetically almost identical to the Proto-Slavic, uh, Balto-Slavic people, who were the cousins of the Proto-Indo-Iranians and the Proto-Vedic Indians. On the other hand, the South Slavs of the Balkans have a different genetic and ethnic history and are the outcome of the Slavic invaders who were able to impose their culture, language, and ethnic identity on the indigenous Southeastern Europeans. The Litsky of Eurogenes has done an excellent job at investigating this issue. Since most Europeans are oblivious to their history now, and archaeologists and geneticists discover new things all the time, So even though the South Slavs speak Slavic languages, they derive the vast majority of their ancestry from the pre-existing Balkan farmers and therefore cluster more closely towards the Mediterranean genetic profile. If you take a look at the Proto-Bulgars, who have commonly been considered to be a Turkic people, you see that they cluster fairly close to contemporary Bulgarians, and both are genetically closest to Southern Europeans, with the exception being that the contemporary Bulgarians are just slightly Slavic shifted. The Croats have a bit more step admixture than the Serbs do, but they're still largely Mediterranean as well. So we have to reconsider the narrative behind the ethnic origins of the people here, if only because pan-Slavism has been a total failure in the Balkans. How many times are the Serbs, Bosniaks, and Croats going to be Illyrians when it's advantageous to be Illyrian, Slavs when it's advantageous to be Slavic, Goths when it's advantageous to be Gothic, or Iranian when it's advantageous to be Iranian? And secondly, the Proto-Bulgars were unable to impose their supposedly Turkic language on their Slavic subjects and wound up becoming the losers of history after getting absorbed into the Slavic family. There are hardly any Turkic words in the contemporary Bulgarian or Macedonian lexicon, and most of the Turkic words or borrowings found in the South Slavic languages have been traced back to the Avars. And this is where I end my dissertation. Thank you for watching.